I love him. I think he's relatable. I think he's going to be uh, the face of the NBA. I think LeBron's aging. Kawhi and Anthony Davis don't talk much. Harden's game is not that likable. Giannis is fascinating, but took us about five years to learn who he was. Now he plays in Milwaukee, more of a team guy. Embiid's fascinating, but will he win enough and will his body last? Ben Simmons, again, not a real true score the way we like our scores to be. Um, uh, and Steph, a lot of people, he's just not physically dominant. And we like our athletes, Tiger, Jack Nicholas, Brooks Kepka. We like them to be big and dominating and strong. And Zion is all that. And I could not be happier. But I do think NFL players look at this and think, 75 million. I get hit all day. My league's the most popular. My league, our Pro Bowl gets double the ratings of even NBA playoff games our Pro Bowl. And NFL guys are like, we make more, mo- we make less money. We don't have the guarantees. We get cut. In fact, when Zion signed the deal, DeAndre Hopkins, arguably the best receiver in the NFL, said, y'all think top NFL players deserve a top NBA player contract? He asked the question. I think he, what we know what he was insinuating. The reality is this. When you choose football, just like a lot of jobs, if you want to be a school teacher, you know you'll probably, unless you play Powerball, not be rich. But you're joining somebody's life at 8, 9, 10 years old, and you will be part of the fabric of a young person's life. Football is similar. You're joining a brotherhood. You're joining a unit. The NFL is a massive pond, and it's almost impossible to be a big fish. When Tom Brady retires, the NBA ratings will not miss a tick. Favre left. Peyton Manning left. Tebow came and left. Didn't matter. Michael Jordan left. NBA ratings dropped 50%. Magic saved the league. Michael made it global. LeBron made it mobile. We don't think of the NFL in those terms. The downside to being part of a giant machine like the NFL is you become a part, a lug nut, and you generally become incredibly replaceable. So NFL players look at their dominance of their industry as a strength, and it actually becomes a weakness, a liability. Zion is worth every penny. With LeBron aging, Kawhi and Anthony Davis quiet, Embiid maybe doesn't physically make it, Harden's game not really ever going to be the face of the league, this likable, smiling, flashy, exuberant, relatable to a large degree, giant of a 19-year-old, Listen, Baker Mayfield may change Cleveland. He'll not change the league. Zion can help elevate the entire league. Now, the downside to that and the downside to being a young NBA star, there's a lot of pressure. Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, acknowledges a lot of our stars are unhappy. It's the great duality of life with the big shoe contracts. With the worship among 17-year-old kids worshiping Zion and worshiping KD and worshiping Steph comes enormous pressure. And social media criticism and outrage if you don't deliver on the promises. But there's a reason NFL guys don't make NBA player money. And that Zion has played nine minutes and got $75 million. He's worth it. Most NFL players in the big machine are simply not. Kawhi's people told Magic Johnson, according to The Athletic, we have a way we handle business and we expect the same. We would appreciate discretion. Does that sound like Magic Johnson? Magic Johnson is a lot like the Queen of England. She's the ambassador of England. Nobody's quite sure what she does, but she waves and everybody's like, oh, she is England. Magic Johnson's the ambassador of L.A. sports. Like, Magic Johnson walks into a room, and it's like, oh, he represents Los Angeles sports. Now, I don't, I don't know. Like, he was the president of the Lakers. I'm not sure if he did a lot of scouting. And he's a part owner of the Dodgers, but I don't see him as a baseball guy. And he's got a bunch of businesses, but, uh, like, as a coach and as a president in basketball, he's sort of the ambassador of L.A. sports. It all goes through him. If you want to be a star in L.A., you got to beat Magic. It's the golden handshake. He's the ambassador of Los Angeles sports. And for a while in this country, next to Michael Jordan, American sports. But Kawhi and Magic was never going to work as a recruiting pitch. Magic's a walking press conference. Magic ad-libbed his way, quitting the Lakers for 45 minutes. Kawhi Leonard won a championship, lit a cigar, and said, thanks for flying United, I'm leaving Canada. That's who he is. Now, LeBron and Magic is different. LeBron and Magic have similar trajectories. 
That's a very easy conversation to have. But Magic can't relate to, relate to Kawhi's story. It never worked. Kawhi was overlooked. Kawhi's been disrespected. Kawhi's been passed over. Kawhi had no big offers. Kawhi was traded to Canada out of spite. He's got a withdrawn personality. He's incredibly discreet. All those things are the opposite of magic. Sending magic to recruit Kawhi would be like sending Ted Nugent to recruit a vegan. It would be like sending Dennis Rodman to recruit Tebow. Their personalities, the trajectories aren't the same. Magic's a talker. Magic is verbal. Magic's a waver. Magic's an ad libber. Magic, Magic said, listen, I don't want to be the Laker president. I want to be able to go to Twitter. He's a talker. He's verbal. He's a communicator. I've said before, Magic Johnson is a human LinkedIn. He just connects people. Kawhi's discreet, overlooked, bypassed, little covert. Now, we found that Kawhi is a little more secretive and a little more manipulative Magic's not that manipulative. When Magic Johnson didn't like Rob Palenka, it was pretty obvious from his press conference he didn't like Rob Palenka. Then he came out a week later on a TV show and said, I don't really like Rob Palenka. So I don't think Magic, this sales pitch, was never going to work. I, I, last night I went to a dinner and I sat next to Oregon's football coach, Mario Cristobal. And Mario uh, is a great recruiter. The Oregon staff is known as one of the better recruiting staffs in the West Coast. And we talked about recruiting. And he's, he's, he's like, listen, I, I can relate to some of these players. I wasn't a five-star guy. And we talked about what works in recruiting and showing love. And he's like, relatability, connecting to people, having similar interests. You could not pick a more dissimilar personality with Kawhi in my life in the NBA than Magic Johnson. I mean, Michael Jordan. By and large, you don't see much of him. He hides. I don't see a lot of Larry Bird. I haven't seen LeBron in L.A. much. Magic is on television in this city and in, in the neighborhoods and on, at games constantly. So I think this, I just don't think the Kawhi Magic sales pitch was ever going to be perfect. And I think the LeBron Magic sales pitch was absolutely perfect. Both young stars, both love, both iconic, perfect name, one name, uh, uh, connectability, the way they played. Uh, Magic and LeBron, I, I've said for years and years, Kobe was Michael Jordan. Magic is LeBron. LeBron's just a better athlete, bigger, stronger version of Magic, but, but, but LeBron's more Magic than Michael Jordan, and he always has been. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.